Hi, Movie Recaps here. Today, I will show you a drama, horror, mystery film from 2017 titled Flatliners. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Courtney Holmes driving her car together with her sister Tessa. The girls are having a relaxing time together, but tragedy occurs when Courtney gets distracted by her phone and crashes the car into the road railing, causing it to fall into the river. Nine years later, Courtney is a medical student doing her rounds at the hospital. When checking on a patient that almost died earlier that day, Courtney asks her if she remembers anything from the time her heart stopped, making the patient ask her in return if she's lost someone. Ray and Marlo, who are medical students too, are also working at the hospital and showing some sort of rivalry while looking after a patient. Later in the evening, Courtney goes to the library to do some research about the afterlife. Her reading is interrupted when she hears her classmate, Sophia Manning, crying at a table nearby. Courtney decides to go check on her and learns Sophia is under a lot of stress and pressure from her mom and how difficult medical school is. They leave the library together and Courtney invites her to share a little side project she's working on, to which Sophia answers with a maybe. The next day, Courtney, Sophia, Marlo and Ray and their friend Jamie are all in class getting scolded by their teacher for not answering quickly and well enough. Afterward, Sophia works at a doctor's event with Jamie, who doesn't need it because he's trust funded but goes anyways to chase after a caterer. Sophia sends a message to her mother to show her where she is and admits her mother has moved in with her just to keep tabs on her daughter. After doing more rounds in the hospital, Courtney invites Jamie to have fun with her later at the hospital's basement, which Jamie misunderstands as innuendo. When he accepts, she asks him to take the service elevator because there are no cameras there. Later at night, both Sophia and Jamie join Courtney at the hospital's basement as she requested. There's a whole functional clinic there in case of emergencies. Courtney explains to them what her project is about. She's been searching for the region of the brain that is responsible for near-death experiences, so she wants to map the process the same way they map a seizure. In order to do that, she wants her friends to stop her heart while she's in the image scanner, then bring her back after one minute. Sophia doesn't want anything to do with it, but Jamie accepts. He stops Courtney's heart with a combination of drugs in the defibrillator, effectively killing her. While Sophie and Jamie keep an eye on the scanner and make sure it's recording, Courtney has an out-of-body experience. She sees everyone inside the hospital and then the roof before going around the whole city. When the minute passes, Sophia and Jamie start the resuscitating process, but they aren't able to bring her back. Sophia pages Ray asking for help, and he rushes out of his office when he sees the message, so Marlo sees him leave. Courtney continues her journey. Now she sees the room she is in explode, before appearing at a bridge filled with glowing lights. This vision ends, however, when her friends finally manage to bring her back with the help of Ray's smart guidance. As Sophia calls Courtney crazy, Marlo arrives and demands to know what's going on. Moments later, the five of them go to Courtney's place, where she tells them what the experience was like. She calls it pure energy. Together they watch the scanner recordings and notice bolts of lightning appearing on different areas of the brain. Ray decides to leave because he thinks this idea was crazy, and Courtney spends 10 minutes on the balcony, just watching the city. When Marlo checks on her, Courtney says she wants to bake. The next morning, all the bread Courtney's baked is brought to class. Marlo says she made six loaves when she remembered her grandmother's recipe. She also says Courtney ran 12 miles. When their teacher starts going through the cases, Courtney has the right answers for all of them as soon as Sophia finishes describing them. She even uses rare knowledge she read in a book a couple years ago. In the evening, when the five of them go to the bar, Courtney plays the piano after 12 years of not touching one. Her friends are impressed by the way she can access everything she's ever learned, calling it rewiring of the brain. Ray still thinks these experiments are a bad idea, but Jamie is excited and decided to go next. Later at her apartment, Courtney thinks she hears a noise in the shower, so she moves the curtains to check. There's nothing there, so she leaves the bathroom after making sure the curtains are left open, but returns when she hears the noise again. She finds one of the curtains has fallen in the tub, which is now full of water, and she's startled by a face suddenly appearing in it. Screaming, she falls to the floor, only to discover that she imagined the whole thing when she stands up again and sees the curtain and bathtub are in the same condition she left them in. The group, including a still skeptical Ray, goes ahead and helps Jamie flatline next. His vision puts him on a bike on the highway. The ride is exciting and enjoyable, especially when a blonde woman named Alicia appears behind him on the bike. But eventually they make it to a dark neighborhood, where Alicia disappears as she whispers his name and Jamie is brought back to life by his friends. After confirming he's fine, the group goes to Courtney's place to drink and party, even accepting to break one of the apartment's walls when Courtney offers the idea. She and Jamie seem to be on the same wavelength. They share a kiss and have a snow fight in their underwear when it starts to hail. Ray still isn't interested in flatlining, but Marlo decides she'll be going next. While talking about their experiences, Courtney asks Jamie if he saw anything disturbing, to which he answers no. The next day at the hospital, Jamie makes a series of decisions that saves patients' lives. Marlo points out the difference between him and Courtney. While she focused on the past bringing back old information, Jamie is focused on the present, using his intuition, and Marlo can't see what those two things have in common. After everyone goes back to work, Jamie sees Alicia standing in the middle of the street, 
but she's gone after he's distracted by a nurse, who Jamie thought had asked about an abortion. Later that night, Sophia tries to leave her apartment, but her mother doesn't let her, making her stay and study with her. The group goes on without her, and this time, it's Marlo who flatlines. She even asks to stay out for three minutes instead of one like the others. Her visions take her through all of her life's achievements before showing her the word murderer and revisiting the memory of a patient called Cyrus, whom she could have saved. His body appears in front of her at the bottom of a creepy pool, but before she can come any closer to it, she's brought back to life. The group takes Marlo to the roof so she can grab some air, and they're surprised to see Sophia suddenly showing up, demanding to go next. Ray disapproves, but he's told to shut up by the others because he's already as deep in this as they are. Courtney and Marlo accept to help Sophia, but she can't stay too long because the cleaning crew will be arriving soon. Sophia flatlines and her visions show her teenage days. Her mother was constantly pressuring her to be a good student, causing Sophia to get jealous of her classmate Irina when she was doing better than her at school. She ruined Irina's life by hacking her phone and sending out her intimate photographs. Sophia's experience is suddenly cut short, however, when the cleaning crew arrives at the building and her friends are forced to bring her back. Jamie goes out and pulls a fire alarm to distract the employees while the group escapes in a car, almost getting caught by the security guards. Their worries quickly disappear as Marlo drives out of there at a very high speed and they decide to join a party where they have fun dancing and drinking. Courtney leaves the dance floor when she thinks she sees Tessa in a crowd and follows the girl to the parking lot, where she starts having an hallucination. The entire place suddenly becomes empty except for her old destroyed car in front of her. When she comes closer to look inside, she finds Tessa's body floating in the water. Her hand suddenly comes up and startles Courtney, bringing her back to reality. Upset, she decides to leave the party. Meanwhile, Sophia is euphoric thanks to her flatlining experience, so she takes Jamie back to her apartment and makes love to him. After Jamie leaves the apartment, Sophia's mom tries to scold her for bringing a man over to her place, but Sophia finally stands up to her and tells her she's moving out. Marlo and Ray also leave the party together. When they make it to Marlo's house, she convinces him to come inside by saying she has something important to tell him. They share a drink while Marlo confesses Cyrus' death was her fault because she made a mistake while choosing his treatment. She also admits being scared because she saw him during her flatlining. Ray tells her she's a good person and that everything is going to be fine. Then he kisses her and they make love. A couple of hours later, Courtney goes to the bridge where she lost her sister and remembers the accident, desperately crying with guilt. Jamie returns to his boathouse and has a vision as well. First he thinks he's seeing Alicia crying on his bed, then he hears a baby crying under his furniture. He finds a baby blanket as Alicia approaches him from behind, but she disappears when his phone rings. It's Courtney, who is calling to tell him about her visions. Jamie tells her to stay home so he can go check on her. Courtney enters her apartment and hears music coming from the radio. After turning it off, she records a video on her phone, apologizing and admitting the real reason behind her experiments was to see her sister again, not scientific discovery. A light is suddenly on in her room and the radio starts playing again. Courtney goes to investigate and finds Tessa writing at a desk, looking dreadful. The ghost starts chasing Courtney around the apartment and also appears outside when Courtney climbs out of the window and onto the fire escape. When she tries to re-enter the building through a different window, Tessa pushes her over the railing, killing her. Her friends are told the news the next day by their teacher. Marla thinks that they need to talk about the visions they're having, but Jamie points out the priority is to destroy all evidence of their experiments or they'll be found when the school investigates Courtney's death. Jamie says he'll break into Courtney's apartment to get anything incriminating and tells the others to get rid of their notes. Sophia tells Ray they should have listened to him, and Jamie tells him he can walk away, but Ray wants to stick with them. When the night falls, Marlo gets a call from Jamie while working at the hospital. He tells her he and Ray found Courtney's computer in notes, but not her phone, which would be in the morgue, so Marlo should retrieve it since she has access to it. Marlo goes to the morgue and quickly finds the phone in the file cabinet by making it ring with a call. She's about to leave when she notices Courtney's name on the body list. She decides to take it out and look at it, which makes her rather upset. After putting the body back, Marlo starts having a vision. She sees the words murderer painted on the refrigerated unit and gets a call from Courtney's phone. She picks it up and hears a voice calling her name right before the power goes off. Marlo turns on the flashlight on her phone and sees all the doors from the unit are open. She's also jumped on by Cyrus's body before the shock snaps her back into reality. Jamie is having issues as well. His shower suddenly runs out of water and his radio starts playing baby music. He only manages to stop it after disconnecting it with a knife. Then he hears a voice whispering his name and a woman crying before Alicia appears in front of him. Jamie rushes out of the boat when a hand touches him. However, Alicia is waiting for him outside and when he sees her, he falls into the water. He swims to the dock and screams when a figure stabs his hand. The group gets together to watch Courtney's recording and after hearing her talk to Tessa, Marlo comes to the conclusion their sins are coming back to haunt them. Jamie decides everyone should tell the truth and he starts by talking about Alicia. He slept with her and got her pregnant but was willing to pay for the abortion. When the day came though, he wasn't capable of doing it so he drove away and left her to fend for herself. She was the one that stabbed him last night, except it couldn't have really been her because she's still alive and living somewhere else. Sophia confesses what she did to Irina in high school, but Marlo doesn't say anything about Cyrus. 
They think there's some being, perhaps demonic, that is using their guilt to go after them. Sometime later, during a class, Sophia has a vision too. She thinks she's getting insulting text messages like Irina used to get and sees a video of her sleeping with Jamie appearing on the computer screen. Unsettled, she leaves the room and makes it to the hallway, where she hears a girl's laughter while an apparition walks behind her. Sophia enters the elevator and notices the ceiling is missing, but she can't get out because the doors have already closed. The elevator starts going up and suddenly stops in an old abandoned classroom where Irina shows up, startling Sophia back into reality. Ray visits Marlow at her house to tell her he's discovered she changed Cyrus's autopsy report to make his death look like an accident instead of a mistake and asks her to come clean to the dean. Marla refuses to do it because it'll destroy her career. Ray tells her that she shouldn't be a doctor. Meanwhile, Sophia asks James to go with her to see Irina. She confesses to her that she was the one that sent out the pictures and apologizes for her actions. Irina accepts to forgive her. Jamie is inspired by this, and after calling Marlo to tell her about this idea possibly saving them, he goes to see Alicia to apologize as well. He discovers she never got the abortion and she's been raising their son alone, so he admits to being a coward and tells her he wants to help from now on. Later at night, Marlo is at her house reading about the afterlife when she starts having a vision again. She finds herself in the bottom of a dark empty pool where Cyrus's body is in front of her, but she wakes up when she touches it. It's already morning when she leaves the house in her car, crying as she drives. Another hallucination begins on the way. A pair of hands puts a plastic bag around her head, making it hard to breathe and causing her to crash. Ray gets a message from Marlo saying she needs to stop all this, so he calls Sophia and Jamie to help him look for her. They find her in the hospital's basement rooms, flatlining, so they try to bring her back while she has her visions. Marlo finds herself in the pool again, and this time, she stays by Cyrus's side and apologizes to him, but he wakes up and chokes her. Then she appears on a stretcher that Cyrus pushes into an empty room. Marlo gets off the stretcher only to be pushed around before being grabbed by the head and put into a tub filled with water to drown. As Ray tells her he needs her to come back to him, Marlo manages to get out of the water but starts being sucked in by a storm. Suddenly, Courtney appears in front of her and tells her she needs to forgive herself just as Ray finally brings her back to life. A couple of days later, Marlo accepts Courtney was right and goes to see the Dean to accept responsibility for what she did. The Dean puts her on probation. Afterward, she and Ray throw Courtney's computer into the river so nobody tries the experiment again. The movie ends with the group having a drink at a bar and realizing the guy at the piano is playing the same song Courtney did, so they drink a toast to her. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.